If you're looking to make solar simple, give Ron Dominico with AD Energy a call. All day energy made simple. Solar solutions with zero down, options to lease or finance, and roofs and trees are no issue. Call Ron Dominico at 609-226-2802 and tell him you saw him on the Sports Box. Well, hello again and welcome to the show that puts a fudge in Hot Fudge Sunday. This is the Sports Box. The only thing that matters... It's right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hamilton to Mike, along with my partner, Brian, the Ranger of Tard. Brian, how are you? I'm doing well. I don't like when you throw things and it moves the camera, but yeah. that's all right. Well, let, let me get, get up there. Right. There you go. Well, our fans are still out there. There you yeah. go. See that? Look at that. Yeah, it's trying. Slide you right back in. Look at that. Yeah. See that? Now I can just carve it right up like that. Okay. Anyway, today we start our round two playoff coverage, the Atlantic Division Final. We're going to talk about the New York Rangers at those pesky, pesky Ottawa Senators. Rangers, good series against uh, you know the Canadians. I had the Canadians winning this game, this series in six, six or seven, and you know, hey, Lundqvist proved me wrong. He's had a, he's had a good series so far. Rangers really took over the game after game two. They really really took control of the game, beating up Montreal back to back, and you know, the, not the same for the Habs. They blow it again. Well, I think you're you're forgetting game three because I want to forget game three because yeah. that was the worst playoff game I've seen in many Yeah, years. they did. They did take off. They, they, yeah. they were terrible. But, you know, you look at the way that series happened. You know, the, the early part of that series, I really felt that the Rangers started playing Montreal's game. Yep. And to their credit, they got a win doing that, and they probably should have got a second. Yep. But that wasn't really their style. They were kind of goaded into that physical play that Montreal uh, likes to play a little more than they do, a little heavier. Um, but the Rangers won game one, shut out. Uh, in game two, they allowed a tying goal, 17 seconds left, lost it in overtime. But game three, I think, was the big wake-up call because they were they were awful yep. in game three. I think Jeremy Roenick said that was the worst he, he'd seen a playoff team in 20 years. And yeah, I, Jeremy Roenick says it you know, well, has, to be, has to be goal. I mean, I'm inclined to agree with him having, having yeah. watched it. And, you yeah. know, going into game four, I think that was the lowest you could have been as a Ranger fan because yep. you really thought this thing was going to be a really short series. Won a big game four, won an overtime game in game five where they never led in that game. Came back from one goal deficit twice and went in overtime with Mika Zibanejad goal, and they put it away in game six. Um, you you got to feel good as a Ranger fan. You know, a lot of the storylines as to what was going to haunt this team in mm -hmm. that series didn't really present themselves. We talked about how they couldn't win in Montreal. They won two games in Montreal, mm -hmm. should have been three. We talked about how they, how they were a horrible home team. They won two games at home in that series yep. to, to clinch it. Yep. We talked about how uh, they, they really... Had issues defending, especially Henrik Lundqvist had 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 a rough season. He was out. He was out of his mind. He was the Henrik of old in that series, and it was beautiful to see. The, so many things that you were worried about as a Ranger fan mm -hmm. didn't come true. So now they move on to play the Ottawa Senators, who you know I don't think you look past Ottawa at all. I mean, I think Ottawa's played well this year. They did struggle at times against the Bruins, um, but here come the Senators, led by Craig Anderson and goal is playing very well in goal. Um, you know, you, you talk about Ottawa's penalty kill or the power play, not the best in the league. Um, they are tenth in defense. They ended the year at tenth in defense. Um, and, but I'm telling you, they're getting it done with goaltending. I think Craig Anderson keeps them in enough games, and and this Ottawa team, not a high powered off offense, but they can get the job done with guys like you know Bobby Ryan. Um, you know, you talk about Kyle Turris, um, Alexandre Barros. You, you talk about some of these guys you never heard of before, but you know, you got to watch out for the Senators. So the straw that stirs a drink in Ottawa is Eric Carlson, no question. Yes, um, absolutely. It, that's the one guy that the, really anybody playing Ottawa needs to key on. He's he really is the key to everything. Yep. Um, and you're right. You know, they're not going to overwhelm you with with their goal scoring. In fact, they were bottom third in the league in, in goals. They finished um, 22nd offensively. Their defense was, was was pretty good. You bring up Craig Anderson, and I agree. I think he's one of the X factors in the series. Yep. Plays well against the Rangers historically. Uh, this team in 2012 took a, uh, a President's Trophy winning Rangers team um, to seven games. Rangers could sweep that one out. But I think the, the difference in, in, in the series, I think, compared to who Ottawa just played in Boston, is that the Rangers are a much faster team. Uh, Buffalo, Buffalo, Boston plays that heavy, heavy style that I think kind of fit into what Ottawa's looking to do. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a situation where you can't hit what you can't catch. And you look at the, the speed on the back end for Ottawa, you look at Dion Phaneuf. I mean, he's a veritable mm -hmm. parking cone back there. He's really not, he's really not quick at all. So while he, he may have some physical attributes which, are, which can be you know, intimidating, again, you can't hit what you can't catch. Um, but we, talk, we talked a little bit actually with Jim Schmiedeberg of Blue Shirt Underground mm -hmm. about how the Rangers got through that first round series. They didn't really talk about a lot about um, 
They, they got goals when they needed them. Mm -hmm. The thing about Ottawa is, you know, Ottawa had leads in that series against Boston, mm -hmm. and they found ways to screw it up. I mean, they found ways to win it at the end in some cases, but that was a um, a depleted Boston team mm -hmm. also uh, that, that they came to there, for sure. So if I had to put you on the spot and say two or an X factor from the Rangers, X factor from Ottawa, not including the goaltenders, mm -hmm. who do you say you put aside to say these are the people that really have to step up to, to win this game, to win the series. Well, the, the Rangers got through round one without significant contributions from some of the guys they leaned on all year. And some of those guys, you look at their goal scoring this year, Chris Kreider didn't do anything in the first round. In fact, he was, in many ways, um, other than the assist on the, on the Zibanejad overtime winner in game five, was rather invisible on the positive end. You know, JT Miller did nothing at all in the series. He was nowhere to be found. And Kevin Hayes and Derek Stepan as well. Guys that really j that played a big role for the team in the regular season were nowhere to be found in, in the playoffs. Um, that's got to change. If, if you're not getting contributions, I mean, you can't have Jesper Fast be one of your best forwards in a series and expect to contend for a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be something where the Rangers really need to make sure that they're getting the most out of their entire lineup. I think their defense played very well, though, in the first round. That's mm -hmm. got to continue for sure. On, on the Ottawa side... Um, did, I think you get, it, did you give me a guy on the Rangers? Or oh, well, there's a couple of guys. It's, well, you give it, me one. Chris one. Kreider. Oh, yeah. They need Chris Kreider to score goals. Yep. I mean, for, period. For Ottawa, I think it's Derek Broussard, the former Ranger. Because I think Broussard is the kind of player that's going to come. He's going to bring it this series. He wants to be the, the guy that eliminates the team that traded him. Um, for, for, for me, that's one guy who I think is going to provide some secondary scoring for Ottawa in this series. And he played a decent series also mm -hmm. against Boston. But... You know, again, if, if you look past Carlson at that second level of offense, Broussard's a guy I think has to have a big series for the for, for Ottawa to contend. And since you're going to ask my opinion too, Brian, I would ask. I would. I would probably tell you. I would think Jimmy Vesey needs to step up a little bit Vesey. for the Rangers. Vesey, excuse me, Jimmy Vesey. And I would say for the Ottawa Senators, I'm going to say Bobby Ryan. I, I think Bobby Ryan has turned into a kind of. I wouldn't say scoring machine, but he's kind of a pesky guy. He, uh -huh. he gets under your skin. He gets in spots where he's not supposed to be. So I think those are the two guys that, uh, that, uh, that are going to have to step up their teams. Gold thing matchup, you know, considering the way Lundqvist played the first series, I think it's pretty close. Um, I give the edge to uh, Anderson slightly because of the goals against average and the way he's played against the Rangers, but could go either way. I mean, hey, hats off to Lundqvist. As a goalie myself, he's played – very, very well so far. Uh, hopefully, he can give up the series because they're going to need him. Well, he, he, you know, the funny thing about him is he, he's a gamer in the playoffs. He always has been. Yep. Um, he, that, that added level of focus. He's a really cerebral player. I mean, I've watched him his entire career. And when, when in pressure spots, normally he rises to the occasion in, in, in a big way. Um, and not, not making this a homer pick here, I think I think the, the goaltending advantage is definitely on the Rangers' side. And I say that because you're talking about the fourth-ranked offense in the NHL in the regular season going up against the 22nd. So Anderson's going to have to be better than Lundqvist to equal that out, and I don't well, think he's going to be to begin with. But in the same sense, you know, they, have a, uh, they don't have a good offense, Ottawa. But in the same sense, they've had to get there on the back of Craig Anderson. Sure. So that's why I'm giving a slight nod to Anderson. They, I think I think they need they need him to be. Oh, absolutely. More if, if he's if he's average, they're going to get killed in the series. That's that's what he has. He has to play above and beyond what he's normally played to beat this Rangers team, who seems to be you know rolling along. So, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching. Well, we got to make our picks. Oh, I'm Can sorry. Picks? I'm jumping ahead. Uh, well, go ahead. I'll let you go first. I I, I, I see. I wonder what's coming here. Well, go ahead. Sorry. For the record, I picked against them in round one. You did. We okay. both did. Let, let's yeah. call that what it is. We did. I, am not, I don't pick these from a homer perspective. That's true. Okay? You don't. I don't. Sometimes. But I do think that th this is this is one series that pops out to me in the second round mm -hmm. where the opponent for one team is less difficult than the first round. It's a weird way the answer does the playoffs these days, frankly. Okay. Um, this should be, I don't want to, I'm not going to use the word cakewalk, but compared to Montreal, this is a much easier series, I feel, for the Rangers to win. Um, initially, I said Rangers in five, but I think that Ottawa, I think the Rangers win three out of the first four. I think Ottawa wins that game five at home. So I'm going to say Rangers in six when they win that game on, on Garden Ice, but I, I don't, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a little bit less. I don't think that Ottawa's got the bullets to make it go seven, frankly. I think that was a heavy series with Boston that they barely got through. And they're really going to need scoring to keep up with, for the first time in a while, a pretty potent Rangers offense. And uh, we talked about this too. A lot of the holes that the Rangers had coming into the playoffs, or the perceived holes, they really found ways to answer in round one against a better team in Montreal. Um, I'll take the Rangers. I'll go within six games. I'm going to say, unfortunately, Ottawa as well. 
No, I'm sorry, you picked the range. So I'm taking Ottawa in seven. I think it's going to be a bang up, knockdown, drag out series, but I think Ottawa can <coughs> squeak this game out in game seven. Wouldn't surprise me if the Rangers do win this series because we did pick them, I guess. I did pick against them in the first series. Not that I'm a Ranger hater, I'm really not. But I just think Ottawa had a little bit more in the way of goaltending, but we will see. I've been wrong before, and hopefully Brian's thinking I'm wrong again. So. Well, I would agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. Yeah, so I can't do that. That's true, I can't. Why, why do that? So, right. Thank you for watching round two of the Atlantic Division Final. We always have good stuff coming. You can always get us on social media if you need to. Absolutely. We're previewing all of the second round series in the NHL. Uh, we're, we're, we're starting with this one, but there's going to be a lot more to come. So if you're looking for us, we're everywhere you, you want to be. We're on Twitter at, at Sportsbox Show, on Facebook at Sportsbox Show. And, of course, if you haven't yet joined the, the subscribers to the YouTube channel here, I don't know what you're waiting for. I really have no idea. It's, it's it, wonderful. It is unbelievable. So remember, at the Sportsbox, <coughs> the only opinion that matters. Well, you know what? Oh. Right, Brian, it. The only opinion that matters is right here. And Mike gets really upset when you forget about that, but... Thanks for watching! He left. See ya! He left. This episode of The Sports Box is brought to you by Mike'd Up Entertainment and DJ Mike Villardi. For all of your event planning needs, make sure you contact Mike at 609-864-5925 and tell him that you saw him on The Sports Box. One, two, three. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe.